Welcome to Season 2, Episode 1 of Safety is an Illusion Podcast. I'm your host, Ghost Rats, and today's topic is going to be how to prepare and to better protect yourself against cyber and hacking attacks. It's no longer if I'm going to get hacked, it's more or less when you're going to get hacked. Uh, unfortunately, we live in that scary reality now where we live in a digital battleground. Now, to protect yourself, there's ways you can protect yourself, but you need to understand that you're, just because you have one or two things that protect yourself doesn't mean you're actually safe. That's why I really promote that safety as an illusion because a lot of people become complacent with the things they have and they think, that, oh, I'm going to be fine. I don't need to worry about that. That's never going to happen to me, but it can. Like That's the reason why 90% of these big companies get breached and hacked is that they're very lax with their cybersecurity. And when it comes to their downfall, it's just because they were never proactive. We spend way too much time nowadays being reactive. We need to be proactive. Now, when I say we, I'm talking about companies and the everyday user. Got to be more proactive. Like you got to, you got to prepare for the worst. And how do you do that? Like I'm gonna get into that later on in the podcast. So I want to get this message out there first about how like uh, you should not be complacent anymore. You need to really up your game because there's some real big things coming on the horizon. Now the dark web is full of criminals. Now, the dark web is also good. I mean, there's a lot of good things about the dark web that I really emphasize on this channel. So I don't want to scare you away from the good things of the dark web and how it protects people. But at the same time, it is a haven for criminals. It's also a haven for digital organized crime. These digital mafias are constantly attacking and trying to breach companies to install their ransomware and take their money and go and go attack the next victim. So how do you protect yourself from a ransomware attack? So just a brief explanation. Ransomware is where they lock up computers and resources and they ha you have to pay them to give you a key to unlock and get your data back. But it's not guaranteed that they're going to unlock the data or even give you back all their data. They could copy it, sell it in the dark web, sell the information to the dark web. I mean, you see these news reports of where these businesses get hacked and they end up forking over millions of dollars just to get the infrastructure back online. And they, they're, there is ways to help prevent and mitigate that kind of attack so the w one way you can do it now we're going to start leaning into how to prevent and how to help minimize the risk right you need to build in redundancy and you need to you need to spend the money spend the money on infrastructure spend the money on cybersecurity. if if you get hacked because you not are not proactive you're being reactive it's on you like you, it, the responsibility needs to start falling on these companies when they do get hacked because it makes everybody vulnerable like they need to be held more accountable i think they should be fined i think on top of them getting hacked they should have some kind of penalty for allowing it to happen because there's steps you can take to mit mitigate the risk if you can prove that that company took special steps to help soften the blow then okay maybe they shouldn't get penalized but a lot of these companies they just don't care because they just they don't the people that make their money make their money they don't care about the little people they don't care that people don't care that AT, a lot of people don't understand that at t gets hacked and all your information is now on the dark web being sold left and right and uh, they're buying houses and people's names and things like that. They, that that's 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 horrible I and mean, it's not your fault it's the company that held your data's fault and they need to be held r r accountable if someone was to give me all their valuables, I held it in my garage, and I left the garage door slightly opened, and someone broke in and took your stuff, I would be held accountable for you losing your goods. The same thing needs to happen to these companies. So just like having a, f a flat tire in your car, I'm like you can drive to work every single day, and everything is fine and totally blissful, and then one day you pop your tire. You never planned for that tire to pop, but... It's, it's sooner or later. I mean, you're taking your chance every single day going to work. You're going to pop your tire or your car is going to break down. I mean, things are going to happen that are outside of the norm. So how do you mitigate the risk? Well, you start when it comes to ransomware, you need to have computer backups. You need to have almost the equivalent of your workforce double. So if you have 10 work computers in your work environment, you need to have 10 on a standby that are completely isolated from your environment. In addition to having these computers isolated, you need to have a secondary network. So if your network gets breached and your computers get breached, everything's compromised. You can't connect to that network anymore. It's completely, until you can have a disaster plan, have them come in and fix it all, you need something to get you back online. Every, time, every moment down is money. So you need to have a secondary network, a secondary system that's completely isolated, that has, does not touch one another, up and running. So this way, this might have gotten compromised, but this side of the business isn't. Or have... Or if you can't afford it, have at least f five computers for backup. 
have a, so you at least have a secondary network. You need to have another way of getting your data in and out. And you need to have ba backups. I mean, you don't just need cloud backups. You're going to need local backups, local archives. You need to have that kind of stuff. You need to have that stuff isolated. There's no need to have cold... You can have cold storage where you have all your stuff backed up, completely disconnected from any kind of network. The only access to that storage and all that, all those files would have to be a physical access to get to it. But, like, you got to... You gotta plan for stuff like this. You need to have it. You need to have it. Don't be complacent. You're only going to hurt yourself. Like you need to, and especially nowadays, the, the the next major terrorist attack is definitely going to be a digital one, and it's be far more worse than a physical one. I know it's hard to believe, but like our society is so fragile. We just we we just recently dodged a giant bullet with this whole um, Linux backdoor SSH connection. Uh, that that one Microsoft employee found it, and he stopped probably one of the biggest cyber attacks that probably would have ever happened. It essentially op left a black back door in any Linux machines. And I know a lot of people use Windows, but 90% of the servers in the world run off of Linux. So I mean, they would have they could have totally caused complete devastation. But something like that could probably happen again. And maybe there won't be a guy that would recognize that there's a little dysfunction in a program or. It, something might not stand out the next time. And it just It's a constant cat and mouse game. So protect yourself. Start coming up start, start coming up with disaster plans. Build redundancy. Be proactive. You have to be. You have to be. Have backups of your computer. So if you were to get compromised, it's not that much of a big deal. You don't have to pay the ransom. You have the information. Now we just got to come up with disaster recovery when it comes to everybody's information that got stolen. Um, and I think these companies need to be held more accountable when this stuff happens. I think there needs to be some regulations. It shouldn't be on the governments. Uh, it should be like the governments. They shouldn't rely on the governments to bail them out on this. I mean, they have the money. They they make their billions and billions of dollars of profit. They can certainly invest in better cybersecurity. It's a need. It's and it's a must. I truly believe that these companies need to be held responsible. If they can afford the money to pay the ransomware, they can certainly afford the money to upgrade their cybersecurity. They just can't. They're going to pay either way. It's just a matter of time. You're going to get a flat tire. You're going to, car's going to break down. It's no longer an if, it's a when. So that's it for this podcast. If you like it, please leave a like and subscribe and comment below what you think. Um, I think next podcast we'll talk a little bit about the future of malware and uh, viruses and the implication of AI in them the smart viruses i'm going to call them we'll talk about that next stream but thank you very much for listening and remember safety is an illusion and i'll see you in the next podcast